Let's not do this again. <laughs> Hang on a second. Whoa, 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 what are we doing? Slide over, man. What, what are you talking yeah, about? Camera hog? <laughs> yeah, this is my camera. Your yeah. camera's over there. Gosh, I am short, aren't I? Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is what we were doing last night. We came in here, just so you know, real time, it's three o'clock recording for tonight's show. Busy day, yeah, both you, of us. You've actually had a busy day. I almost yeah. scrapped tonight's Tech Tuesday. Welcome to the channel, guys. Uh, last night, Chuck and I had some emails, some things we wanted to talk about, and we stood here and we both kind of just looked down and uh, the juices just weren't flowing. And I looked at him, I said, you want to do this tomorrow morning? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. He was he was out of here and I was out of here. And then, of course, he got tied up this morning and I, I was a little tired myself and it was tough to, to get on camera. But uh, we like to keep it real. We want to be consistent, so welcome to the channel. We are going to have a Tech Tuesday. A couple emails for you guys and a couple stories. Real quick, I want to thank everybody. Don't know if you saw Sunday's Coffee with Conti. I did. Did you like that shirt I was wearing? Yeah. yeah. So did everybody else. I got yeah. emails and texts and comments on the video. Well, actually, I bought that from InShaneDesigns.com. Address is up on the screen. A big shout out to my friend Matt Beaver and Mike at Street Speed 717. Great shirt, it fits, and I'm actually still in the drawing to possibly win a Rapid Blue C6 ZR1. Thanks, guys. You're doing a great job over there. Uh, I got some intel about the C8 generation. I got some intel about next year's car, some stuff I'm unfortunately I can't share. So there are some really good things coming, including Z06. So just asking everybody to be patient. Let me kind of do my job. It's kind of hard right now. And I told you guys to. We were gonna have a pricing story for you. We've kind of used the opening of Tech Tuesday now to kind of talk about the marketplace. And just a little banter real quick. But uh, before we do that, I was talking about the shirt I got. Why don't you show the guys what you just got from my friend, my customer, Steve. Well, Look at him smiling. He's, he's so happy. Yeah. He, he can't wait to show this he off. He loves Tech Tuesday, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm about ready to take you off the channel. Uh, okay. <laughs> Steve stopped in, gave me a box of cigars and a nice cutter. Because he found out during the Z06 show that I like cigars. So, wow. thank you very much. Steve, very thoughtful, sir. Yes. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, you always said if you're smoking, it keeps... Everybody what, what, else alive. Keeps everybody else alive. So I think <laughs> yeah. I think the shop and the family, everybody's in good shape with those. Yeah. Those yeah. are pretty serious. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's give you a pricing story to give you some more understanding. Many of you know, some of you don't, and how crazy this market is right now. Uh, this one from a perspective from a customer. I'm at a Corvette show. I've told you this one, and your head just shook. Yeah. And I'm hearing the guy. He's two cars away, and I'm hearing the guy bragging that he's on his fourth C8 and his fifth one is ordered. He's now since taken delivery of his fifth one, cars that he didn't buy from me. And then I said, hey, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt, but did you say you're on your fourth CA? He says, yeah, I got this little dealer outside of such and such, you know, and I order the cars at MSRP. I go, wow, he must get a big allocation. No, it's a small dealer. I said, well, at least they got a nice trade in when you go to get the other one. Oh, no, I don't trade them. <laughs> I go, what do you do with them? Because why sell them between twenty and forty thousand dollars over sticker? Then I go back in, I order me another car. Sure. So by now his fifth one's free. I would yeah. assume. You know what? That is enough out of you. Yeah. Okay. So I That's told enough you. That's enough out of everybody doing that. It's crazy, guys, and it and it has started there in the retail marketplace. We are still in a huge demand with lack of availability for the product. GM's building all that they can, but this part shortage is going to affect Corvette in some ways that you're not expecting but we're going to do the best we can with what we got so thank you for the business opportunities the inquiries we can't make it move any quicker than what it is so no. it is um so for, i don't even like having the conversation because it's like man it's the same thing you've been saying for three years yeah man but that's for real that's exactly what is still happening today if i could show you my phone you would be just blown away at the text messages it's it's nuts so let's Good, bad, whatever. Let's have conversations. Let's continue to build those relationships. Let's give you guys uh, a lot of the right information. And today, hopefully, some stuff that will help you in some of the Tech Tuesday Q&A. So I'll let you go ahead and start, my friend. All right. Yeah, get back over your own camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The first one I have comes from Anthony. 
He says, as you can see from the pics, about a month ago, I started to get this fog in the center of the windshield. Tried to put the heater on or cool it down. Had top up and down, won't go away. Ask Chuck if he knows what's causing, can be causing this issue. This is probably on the outside of the windshield. The reason the heat or the cold didn't take it away. And it's just condensation forming from the air conditioner. I get it on my cruise every morning when I come to work in high, hot, humid days running the air conditioner because it's, you know, seven o'clock in the morning and it's 80 degrees outside. Right. So that, that's more than likely what it is, just condensation. If you hit the wipers, it should take it away, but it'll come right back. This one comes from Robert. I'm still on that. Then a little delay funk. Yeah. We, 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 did, we sat over these emails last night, just kind of hovering, and there was like silence for like five minutes, and finally we just looked at each other and said, ah. But just to give you an idea of really the pressure and the stress that we're under, yeah. uh, but we do we do love being here with you on the channel. Okay, so this comes from Robert. Watch the channel, especially Tech Tuesdays. Love you and Chuck. I have a 21 C8 Corvette. This might be for you. <laughs> Having problems with the transmission shifting. Goes through this big story, went to the dealership, and uh, around the mulberry bush we go. Um, please ask Chuck if you know what the problem is. I'm taking it back to the dealership. They did some kind of a, a fluid replacement, it sounds like, Chuck. And that's that's not what you've been dealing with with CA transmissions. In fact, hang on a second. We'll take you over here to our boy, Nate. Yeah. Well, I, I'm glad I didn't show him what it was earlier today. Yeah, it just, I mean, we're getting there. So let me ask you this. If you had to be a technician for the rest of your career and all you could do was put in transmissions, what would you do? I'd quit tomorrow. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's, that's some real work right there, man. That's crazy. So why don't you go ahead and tell the guys some of the transmission scenarios that have been happening. Some of them are just kind of popping up all over the country. Uh, it's not changing the fluid on a C8 Corvette. Go ahead. Um, no, I, we've had a couple of them that's uh, put, fluid's been pushed through the case. We've had to replace them for that. Shifting issues. Oh, wait, wait, can I just, can I stop you there? I'm sorry. I just, this is some, <laughs> God, did you know where I'm going with this? Do you have a can of it somewhere? Wait, I think Nate does, hang on. Yeah. Oh, our new special tool? Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. That's right. That's how you find the leak. You spray the casing with the powder. But anyway, uh, they're having a lot of shifting issues. I know GM has a bulletin out there that covers about every transmission-related code. There are certain clean procedures that they want you to go through GDS2 and do that might help straighten some of that out. I mean, depending on what the codes are and what kind of shifting problems you're having, it may possibly need a transmission, but yeah, they want you to go through and do a cleaning process on some of them, like I said, through the computer, so. Well, I'm glad you mentioned computer because what we're finding is, even for you, there's been a couple of scenarios and codes where you really thought, uh-oh, we're at the point now we're gonna have to change the transmission. And then the guys at technical assistance say, no, do this, do this all computer related, the right. next thing you know, the car's running fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, not all of them, but I mean, there's more to the electronics in this car than there is in the mechanics in that transmission. So uh, that could be your case too. Okay, this one comes from George. I found your YouTube channel a couple months ago, I have been hooked forever. I just purchased a 2016 Stingray Coupe, Shark Gray, automatic A speed, only 13,000 miles. I love my vet, but I want to improve on the stock non-PP exhaust. My question is, I see dozens of axle back MPP exhaust systems for sale in the forums as well as eBay. Can I directly bolt on an, an MPP exhaust on my non-MPP 2016? I realize I won't be able to open close the valves. Will I get codes or do any harm? Uh, yeah because it still has the cylinder deactivation valves in it. So, the, and both valves are from the tailpipe back in the muffler system. Right. So yeah, you'll still, you'll get codes if the cylinder deactivation valves aren't working. I know, I think Paragon and- Well, yeah, if you're gonna go through that expense, you know, at that point, you might as well do it right where you can get kits that aren't gonna throw codes. Right. Paragon should have some stuff for C7, course of performance should have some stuff. 
and you'll have you'll be very very happy on the way that they look and the way that they sound so i think that's something to uh to look into uh, we were talking in one of my vlogs talking about uh, i think that was a sunday show in fact about how a car was ordered wrong the guy was at the museum and discovered that it was wrong somebody had sent me a message uh on the channel it says i ordered a car from and we'll, they remain nameless the car was ordered wrong after i too was told everything was right uh, when the car came in wrong i still took it it's beautiful i love it he goes here's my bigger problem they didn't show me anything on the car how to set the radio sync my phone up about the mirrors about the memory package they sent me out the door and told me to read the owner's manual this is terrible chevrolet corvette sales practice so chuck he got the old see your keys see your car see you later and that's a joke but it's real and it happens and it happened to this guy here um eli and i do apologize for that if you remember way back gm had an allocation system for this reason so Corvette dealers that were, or Chevy dealerships rather, that were selling Corvette, were dealing with Corvette people, the car was marketed right, it was moving quickly, and the customer was being taken care of. We're evolving to a whole new system right now, right before your very eyes, and we're doing all we can to be a part of it and still do our jobs the right way. When you guys are here, you know it's gloves off as much time as you need to show you all this stuff on the car. It's unfortunate that you'll forget half of it, but there really is a lot of neat stuff on this car, and that's what I, I really enjoy doing. And, and seeing this message reminds me that I need to delegate time to actually record the video I've talked about and teased for over a year, and that's do a full delivery video that'll be beneficial to my customers that I ship the car, but to a lot of you that watch the channel as we continue to grow our presence in the Corvette community. So I'm gonna do all I can to really make that happen here in the next 30 days. So thanks again for watching the channel and thanks for the engagement with the comment. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's nobody has any idea how much stuff are in these C8s if they've never been in one. It's yeah. astronomical. Right. You know, but good fun. stuff. And it's fun. Once well, you yeah. learn, it's like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. Oh, I didn't know I could do that. Oh, you, yeah. you was just at the uh, the track here not too long ago and showed a young lady how to put hers in the, the drive mode. Competitive driving mode. Yeah. yeah. But she had no idea that it even existed. Yeah. Then she said, I didn't feel like I was fighting the car. That made me feel good, too, because <laughs> she was enjoying her car and enjoying the day. Yeah. And that, that's what we like to do. Yeah. So anyway, this one is my 2022 Z51 HTC with approximately 800 miles is showing score lines on the left front rotor brake disc. Is this acceptable? I do not see this on other Z51s with more miles. My driving the date is modest with no traffic. Is this a warranty issue? And Rick's got some pictures we're gonna put yeah. up and show you. You guys look at the pictures, you look at the pictures and answer his question. Okay. <laughs> The, this, this, I mean, this is a touch and go situation. No, the rotor should not look like that. And the question is, did something get lodged between the brake pad and the rotor? Piece of gravel, piece of dirt. That's usually what I see. I actually just had a customer call in and he sent me a sound bite of his brand new C8 that sounded like a Coda bus when he stopped. Right. But he sent me the video of it parked in the garage and he was leaning, moving the car back and forth in the garage and it's sitting there going ur, 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 and he's not even on the brakes. And that's when I told him, you probably have something stuck between the backing plate and the rotor. And sure enough, he pulled the wheel off and guess what fell out? A little pebble that was trapped. So if you have something trapped between the rotor and the, the caliper assembly, then no, GM's probably not gonna warranty that because that's debris, but right. yeah, that's what I would be looking for, debris between the, the caliper and the- Now in those rotors, can he can he cut those rotors and still save them because they're yeah, new? They, they can be machined, yes. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. All right, uh, hi Rick and Chuck, this is Paul from Bayside, Queens, New York. I'm currently waiting for my allocation on a new Stingray C8 and planning to do museum delivery. Uh, the car is special to me and I plan to keep it forever. So I wanted to order it with everything that I want on it, including the museum delivery. Great choice, Paul, you're gonna love it. My question is, I'm planning on ordering the car with some accessories like the high wing and a bunch of other stuff he mentions here. And his question is basically, if I order these things that are GM accessory items, do they get installed 
there at the Corvette Museum or do I have to go to a dealership? No, if they're GM authorized accessories, the Corvette Museum has been doing a great job on that. Thank you guys for that, to install those items before you actually arrive for delivery. So make sure they're ordered on the car. Those parts will get shipped right to the museum and you'll be good to go when you show up for uh, showtime on the webcams at the Corvette Museum. Okay, this one comes from Tom. It says, my car has been running great, just had a problem with the top not closing correctly. Got a message, top not secure. I got the car out and the nacelle pad on the driver's side was hitting the roof outside, still stuck in the up position. When I opened the top back up and looked for the cause, the cable that moves the nacelle pad and up and down was broken. I thought I heard something snapper behind the cable operated and the nacelle pad was broken, clean off uh, by the rubber stop. Any idea what broke the cable or why it's snapping? Uh, the only way I could get it closed was to do it slowly and hold it in place. I was able to tuck the nacelle pad back in, close the hatch the rest of the way. Taking to my Chevy dealership, hopefully to have it fixed. Yes, I've had one of these. Yeah. And all I can tell you is when I ordered the one for my customer, it was like they had a new supplier for it. Right. So I'm sure they've redesigned it. But yes, I have seen one of those. Naturally, I want to do a hands-on and show people because then we can segue into something else I wanted to talk about. So you sure. can show the folks that are watching right now that actual part area that Tom was talking about. Because you know that piece, when you watch the cells come down, those pieces going, eh, I don't want to get stuck like this. Sure. All right, so let's show you. Come on, guys. Actually, I should probably be over here. All right, so let's address Tom's question. So this is the piece that got stuck up in the air. Right. You can see the cable runs down here. Right here's the cable that snapped. And then there's another cable that runs up here on the bottom side. It's hard to see, but there's a mechanical connection in here where this cable hooks in and this cable hooks in and a progression where this goes up and down to pull the nacelle in and out. Right. What happened on mine, and I'm sure on his, this part of the cable broke. And you have to order this whole piece. You can't just get the cable. Right. And what happened on my customer's car is he didn't realize it and he damaged the nacelle. Okay. So I had to order a new nacelle and the new piece and replaced it and it's been fine ever since okay so while we're back here this is a perfect segue i had another customer ask the same thing and it actually happened to me when we first started getting the hardtop convertible uh -huh. i'm getting ready to deliver the car and of course you're gone for the night and i can't get the top to close something's going on i'm like what the heck is going on i'm all freaked out and it's this piece right here that when it's up if you're around here checking your stuff and it got bent up like that that will stop the operation of the whole tonneau cover, it's not going to close. Right. It's not going to secure. So if you're doing some stuff on your own or you're checking stuff, make sure that these rubber seals are sealed or you're going to run into some interruptions uh, in the operation of the top and it's hard to, yeah. to know. E even this piece back here, I mean, just any of this yeah, rubber if, stuff. If you look, it's notched. It drops down in and this notch is where it goes down in to lock it in place. Right. So once you get it down in there like that, give it a little tug up, make sure it's gonna stay down in there and you should be good to go. Yeah, I know. I actually, I think I called you at home on that one too. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, they're, they're right here's a sensor. This right here is a rocking arm that's a sensor that has to trip. So there are sensors all over this convertible top and if it gets out of whack one way or another, it goes, hey, I don't know where the, where the, everything's at, so I'm done before I destroy something. No, absolutely. So, all right. So that's pretty much it. That's our Tech Tuesday. One that we didn't think we were going to have. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys have no idea. Yeah. We should actually get some outtakes and let them see all the stuff going on before this goes up.
inside is bleeding Oh, and your heart's bleeding And all you can see is red Till you discover It is within each other To forgive and make amends If I had known then Or what I know now I wouldn't have said what I said I took the long road Thought I'd be better on my own Sometimes what's right is wrong instead Cause I And I didn't understand that you 